You know, I mean, like, like, like Shannon was a star. Yeah. I mean, I knew it, like, the second I saw him. I mean, he was just, you know, he, he was a good-looking dude, you mm-hmm. know. He just kind of had his glowing, like, energy about him. And he kind of was, and he was, um, he had talent. Yeah. A prodigious amount of talent that was obvious. Yeah. Instantly. So, um, to me, that's a star. Yeah. And then also... The- and everybody and everybody knew who he was. Like, I heard about him before I met him. Mm. In Hollywood. That's hard to do. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> what was your first meeting like? The f- well, we, that was that day he played Change. He sat down and played it. And we hung out in the garage. And then we went out and got really drunk. And... Um, and he didn't have anywhere to go. And I was living down in like Culver City, right across from the, the, the big studio there. I think it's uh, um, MGM or something is down there. But um, And so I was sleeping on the couch in Brad's apartment. And, and there were two couches in a, set up in an L shape. So he was going to sleep on the other one. And we were just, I mean, you know, I'm 18, 19, just like <laughs> really drunk and, you know, in a foreign land. And he said something that was really... I thought it was really stupid, you know, and I laughed at him. And like that, he was in my face, like off the couch, in my face, veins bulging out, screaming like a bulldog. I had no idea. And it was only later that I saw that. What did he say? He didn't, he was like, I'm going to fucking, you know, kick your fucking ass. And um, <clears throat> if you don't laugh at me, you know, yeah, that anger. And I was like, I was like, holy shit, wow, this dude's for reals. <laughs> and like I didn't know at the time that he was like a you know, a third degree black belt and an all American wrestler and just light getting hit in the head. We're just talking about Shannon, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. like I mean yeah. he was just one of those dudes. He could drop a guy with like a roundhouse. Kick. I know I mean crazy. I he he yeah. delivered some of the most epic beatdowns I've ever seen of dudes bigger than him and he didn't start him, you know. I could mouth off to anybody because I always felt like I had security around me at yeah. all times. Yeah, I didn't know that. Like, he was take not, care of this he guy was for me. fearless. He was fearless. He would take down a guy that was twice his size, always. He enjoyed punching cops. He I mean, loved it. Like, he would get, he got arrested. I mean, I watched him personally get arrested at least four or five times oh, yeah. for punching cops when oh, yeah. the situation easily could have been avoided. Always it could have been avoided. Yeah. So, yeah, you yeah. know, I mean, yeah. he was like hanging out with a fucking tornado like that, you know, and uh, I didn't know this at the time and he didn't hit me that night for whatever reason. That's one of the only times I ever saw him not take the swing. He never hit us, but he, he never hit anybody he, in the but band. It's a miracle he didn't. He was one of those dudes who had heavy hands, and you know what boxing is. It's yeah. like you, you know how it's like when you get hit by somebody. There's just little dudes who can just knock oh, you yeah. out. Oh hell yeah! He was one of those yeah, dudes. Guy. People don't realize that. Yeah, the <laughs> size thing is yeah. like. Oh, dude, I saw it's not him. as big of an advantage as. Yeah. It it doesn't have to be. Yeah, he would yeah. have been an MMA fighter, right? If he were alive today, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if he were coming along, like he probably would have just been that one of those guys too, who could uh, just happen to sing. Yeah. That, I mean, because he was like he was really good at it. Well, he was interested. I mean, if he became a black belt, then that means he was dedicated. He was pressure, you know. <laughs> it was a lot of pressure, you know, like to excel. But you know, he he was. Um, what do you mean? But he didn't. He didn't live. He didn't. He didn't. He, the most of the time, he was a freaking libertine what do you mean pressure to you know he's he like to excel as a kid he had ability yeah. and you know um <clears throat> i don't know you know he didn't have an easy road but who does but but uh so uh he didn't have any zero easy road oh along. an easy road he yeah. didn't have an easy road yeah, yeah. He, had a, he had it harder than than some i would say yeah i don't want to disparage people you know what i, I mean? don't it's feel like, like you are at all you i this feels like you're celebrating him yeah yeah, yeah. well anyway i'm not talking yeah. about you know yeah, just like this his circumstances or whatever didn't agree with him at times so right. he came along and he had some significant you know run-ins with with authority right from a very young age significant yeah. by the time we even met him mm-hmm. right. you know like what like he you can't go back sheet. to like we yeah. couldn't go play in Indiana yeah. for he like two sheet. years until yeah. a lawyer sorted it out. Yeah. Like you know, I mean, this dude he he could have been his life could have gone in an entirely different direction. Mm. Sounds like he could have been in jail way yeah. before the band yeah he would have been that started. guy he'd have been that guy. You yeah. know, people ask me like, was he like, did he feel like a rock star? Like before the success, and I'm like, yeah, he, he was, was exactly a, the he same. He was exactly the same. He was a rock star when he was working construction in Indiana. I mean, he was just mm-hmm. that way. He didn't change with with success. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He was always that. But he had access. Guy. 
He got he got a little tired of it at a certain point, but um, you know, he did like he did love people, you know, and yeah. he loved to be around people, and he would talk to anybody. He would yeah. much he's much more comfortable talking to, like you know, a, a a person like a genuine like fan of him who would come up and like talk to him about what the music man. Mm-hmm. He was really paranoid about journalists, <laughs> and he was abusive to journalists. Yeah. I mean, to the point that like I mean, they hated us. Right. Uh, like I mean, he, he just he wouldn't take enemies. shit. He wouldn't take shit though. You know, I really appreciate that now because everyone's so like, you know, they just deal with everything now. And he was like, he didn't put up with any he shit. He would never you ask him a stupid question. He's going to tell you a stupid question. You know. How did he deal with the uh, record labels then? He fucked with them. Yeah, you know. <laughs> he didn't help us. He didn't help us, you know. I mean, you the know, night like, we were, he he wouldn't play that game, you know. He, he, yeah, he didn't. The night we were getting our gold and platinum records, I remember he like made a speech and just destroyed the new president, which was Gary <laughs> Gersh. Gary Gersh was like a new president of Capitol, and it's just like basically Shane was like, "Yeah, you're the new president, but you had nothing to do with our success. It was Hale Milgram who was there before you." Like he just com- and we were like, "No, this is not good." You know, Shannon was a sabotager. And it's amazing we had any success at all. Anytime we got close, we would always take a few steps back, you know. We had so many advantages, and it's amazing we had any success because he would sabotage all the time. We have these so? amazing opportunities. Well, like, hey, you're going to sing with Guns N' Roses tonight. We go to the show, and Shannon gets so wasted, <laughs> he, he comes to three hours after the show's over and goes, when do I play? Right. We're like, the show's over. We're on the way home. I forgot about you that. You blew it. Wow. Don't you remember? We're, dry, we're riding in the... So Axel sends a limo for us. We go that to the show. That was fun. I do that remember that. Fun. Yeah, <laughs> see, that's what happened. We're backstage. Yeah. <laughs> Shannon, like, hits Do- Doug Goldstein, got into a fight with Doug. I mean, it was just it was oh, just crazy. right. He punched our manager. I'll never forget, because on the way home from the limo, we're driving the car. We're like, yeah, man, the show's over. And he rolls down the window. He's, like, drinking some cocktail. And he goes, rolls down the window. And I just never forget. He goes just throws it out the window and I was just like he was just out of his mind you know right. as a bummer. so he would say that was that's a great opportunity you're gonna yeah. you're gonna play with Guns N' Roses tonight he gets so wasted he never makes it to he the stage he pulled it off on another night though he did but that's still a sabotage moment and yeah. he did that it was all great the time. yeah like he played in like the LA Coliseum that like, was incredible it, it was amazing and we're all like you know we you know we hadn't done anything yet we hadn't even like yeah. played like maybe like two shows or something yeah, no and this is we happening to him yeah. At the very beginning of when we get together. So wow. so I remember sitting like you know, on the third row at the Coliseum right. of my favorite band in yeah. the world. And it's like there's right. our singer. You know, you when know I was I mean? yeah, seventeen, yeah. eighteen wow. years old and like he's up there and I'm like, I know that dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. exciting for us, you know. That must have been fun as hell. It really was. It was fun. Wow. 